Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe before you go any further and realize how garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute freakazoid. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. So earlier on today, I was looking through the pulls that I got from the box of Blazing Vortex that Konami sent out to me, and I realized that I had about a billion copies of the Springans cards. Seriously, out of the one box, I basically pulled a playset of every single card that is in that set for the deck. So with that in mind, I decided to have a look through and start reading some of the cards. And I thought, you know what? This deck could actually be a little bit of fun. So I decided to make today's video in dedication to those of you out there brave enough to take this deck out to the competitive scene. The idea of today's video is just to give you a basic idea of how to play the deck and to give you some thoughts and ideas that I have on how you could consider playing the deck. There'll also be a sample deck profile which will be glossed over pretty quickly, but there'll be a follow-up video, or maybe it'll come out before this, who knows, timelines are a bit of a weird thing, but we'll go into detail about my card choices in there. Now, as a quick note, before we continue, if you are feeling inspired by this video to go and pick out some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even Pokemon ones for that matter, you should consider checking out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store, and you'll get yourself a nice cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. Springens debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Blazing Vortex early 2021. And given that it's a sequel to 2020, it's probably the second worst year in recorded history. And at the time of recording, we've got some more support coming later in the year in Lightning Overdrive. In the OCG version, the deck is known as Spridgens. Yes, spelled with two Gs, but pronounced as a J sound. Spridgens are Cornish, mythological creatures that somehow look like ugly ass old people and childlike at the same time. Don't ask, even in the UK we think of Cornwall like its own little weird place. We just stick to their pasties and call it a day. According to Yugipedia, the Springens monsters are soot-based lifeforms, which take form in the shape of weaponized armor such as rockets and cannons. Maybe we need to include soot-based lifeforms in our search for extraterrestrial life. The Springens archetype are based out of the same universe as Dogmatica and Tri Brigade, which can be seen in some of their card artwork. It's almost certainly too early to see how much potential the deck has, but given they're a machine based archetype that doesn't exactly need its normal summon, we can safely say that there's some definite possibility for the deck to be competitively viable if someone cracks the code. All of the main deck Springens share an effect which allows them to attach themselves from the hand, field or graveyard to a Springens XC monster you control, and this in tandem with the Great Sand Sea field spell also allows even easier access to the extra deck, which is uh, always a pretty broken concept. The extra deck monsters provide a good variety of popping cards and general disruption to the opponent's plays. And as mentioned earlier, since the deck doesn't overly need its normal summon, it can easily play engines which allow it to extend and either build stronger going first boards, or ways to crack through the opponent's one, particularly if left unhindered. So for the next part of the video, we are going to be doing a rundown of the direct spring and support cards, and we'll cover some that aren't under the spring and's name a little bit later on. It is worth keeping in mind that some of these aren't yet released or even revealed into the TCG yet. Some of the names will be based upon translations, meaning there may be some discrepancies between what you see here and what you'll get. I'll also be reading through the effects in a somewhat shortened manner, although the cards will be on the screen for your perusal. Although given you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we both know that you probably won't be reading a fucking thing. So we start off with Springen's Branger. This card has the attach effect that we discussed earlier, and also you can banish this card and a Springens monster with a different name from your graveyard to add a Springens card from your deck to your hand. Each of the effects is a hard once per turn. Following on from that, we have Springens Captain Sargus. This has the obligatory attach effect, and when it is attached, the XC monster it's attached to gains 500 attack. And then also a hard once per turn effect, which during the opponent's turn quick effect, you can detach a material from an XC you control and then pop a face up card on the field. After that we have Springen's Brothers. This also has the attach effect as discussed earlier. If it's sent to the graveyard from your hand or deck, you can special summon a Springen's monster except itself from your graveyard in defense position. Each of the effects is a hard once per turn. Springen's Pador. Once again, we have the same attach effect. You can also attribute it to special summon a Springen's monster except another copy of Pador from the graveyard. And each of these effects are a hard once per turn. Springen's Rocky. Do I even need to say it? This one has the attach effect as well. 
If it's summoned, you can add a Grand Sea Field spell or a Springlands monster from your graveyard to your hand. And naturally, each of these are a hard ones per turn. We then move on to the extra deck where we have Springlands Ship Explorer. I don't like that word, it's kind of weird to say. It requires 2 plus level 8 monsters. You can choose a monster or spell and trap zone your opponent's side of the field, detach materials from this card and then you can destroy the same number of cards the opponent controls in that chosen zone and the adjacent monster spell or trap zones, depending on which one you pick. Yes, it is basically playing battleships with you. During the opponent's main or battle phase, quick effect, you can banish this card until the end phase. Each effect is a hard ones per turn. Springen's Merrymaker. It requires two level four monsters. If it's special summon from the extra deck, you can send a Springen's monster from your deck to the graveyard. During the opponent's main or battle phase, you can quick effect banish it until the end phase. Then, if it has two or more materials when you did, you can send a fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard that lists Fallen of the Albaz as material. Each effect is a hard ones per turn. We then have some spell and trap support. So we start off with Springen's Watch. It searches the Springen's Field spell. If the Springen's Field spell is in your field zone already, though, you can apply this effect instead. You can search a Springen's monster from your deck, and if you do, send a Springen's monster from your deck to the graveyard. And you can only activate one copy of this card per turn. Then we have the field spell itself, Great Sand Sea Gold Gold Gona. That's a really horrible thing to say. Trust me. All Springen's XE monsters on the field gain a thousand attack. You can use each of the following effects once per turn. That's a hard once per turn, by the way. If you control no Springen's XE monsters, you can discard a Springen's card to special summon a Springen's XE from your extra deck. If a face-up XE monster you control leaves the field due to a card effect, except during the damage step, you can target an opponent's monster. It can't attack for the rest of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. We then have Springen's Booty. If a face-up XE monster or monsters you control leaves the field by a card effect, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls. Players can activate that monster's effects until the end of this turn, even if this leaves the field. You can send this card to the graveyard to activate the field spell from your deck or graveyard, and each of these effects is a hard ones per turn. Springen's Blast. If you control a Springen's monster, choose an opponent's main monster zone. If a monster is in that zone during this turn, it can't attack directly and its effects are negated. If no monster is in the zone, that zone can't be used this turn. If you control a fusion that lists Fallen of Albaz as material, you can choose two zones instead. You can only activate one copy of this card per turn. Springen's Call. You can target a Springen's monster or Fallen of Albaz in your graveyard and special summon it. During the main phase, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it and a fusion monster from your graveyard, then attach a fusion that lists Fallen of Albaz from your extra deck to a Springen's XE monster you control as material. Each of these effects is a hard ones per turn. Following on from that, we also have some indirect support cards that are part of the deck's overall theme. So we start off with Supreme Arc Serpent Golgonda. If the Springen's Field spell is on the field, the original attack becomes 3000, and then each of the following effects are a hard ones per turn. While it's in your hand or graveyard, whilst you have a face-up card in your field zone, please know that that's not just their own spell card. You can special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. If the field spell would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish a monster from your graveyard instead. We then have Fallen of Albaz. If it's summoned except during the damage step, you can discard a card to fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters on either field as material, including this card, but you can't use other monsters you control as material. This effect is a hard ones per turn. And lastly, we have Sprind the Iron Dash Dragon. It requires Fallen of Albaz plus one effect monster special summon this turn. During your main phase, you can move this card into another main monster zone. Then you can destroy all other face-up cards in this card's column. During the end phase, if it's in the graveyard because it was sent at this turn, you can add it to your hand or special summon a Springen's monster or Fallen of Albaz from your deck. Each of these effects is a hard ones per turn. And for the next part, we'll be discussing some cards or engines you might want to consider running in your builds. These will have some synergy with the deck, so do keep this in mind. So we start off with gadgets. Easy XE, deck thinning, and machines. I'm not sure that this needs much more elaboration. There's also the scrap engine. Free machine extenders that are based around popping cards on the field and being popped themselves sounds too good to be true. For me personally, this is a strong pick for mine and any other build that you're considering. There's also the Tri Brigade and Dogmatica cards. Now at this stage, I'm not really sure to what extent that there will be synergy with these archetypes, but considering they all have a shared interest in Fallen of Albaz, there may be something worth exploring. There's also King of the Feral Imps. And basically, he just searches your big worm boy. And lastly, we have the Orcist stuff. Primarily, we'd be looking at Dingirsu here, but there's definitely some other potential synergy here, given that the entire deck is based around machines. The only downside would be that you get locked out into darks. 
For this part of the video, we're going to be showing you a sample deck list. You can get some ideas on how you could attack your own builds. Be warned that this isn't tried and tested extensively, so there may be some good options that aren't included in this particular build, and it won't be refined. This is here purely as some idea generation material for you. Now the list will just be shown on the screen, but if you do want to get some more in-depth information on this, I'm going to be going ahead and doing a video in relation to this particular deck profile to give you some more ideas on why I've gone with what I've gone with. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, you'll have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. It's worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do combo tutorials, deck profiles, how to play videos, vlogs, combo tutorials, deck profiles, pack openings, all of the other good YouTubing content. Seriously though, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here and making it this far into the video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.